into it. Julia Lee, yesterday there was people, you know, lamenting about the performance of the market. Where were we headed? Well, we were headed up by the looks of things, closing up over 3.5% today. An absolutely massive day for the Australian share market with a gain of 3.6%. Now I went back to see when we had such a uh, big move on the Australian share market and I had to go back to the 8th of December 2008 before we saw a performance greater than what we saw today. In fact over the last decade we've only seen 18 times where we have seen a performance like this or even higher. So a huge day in terms of market movement and a big day also in terms of volumes going through the market. Six billion dollars worth of stock being traded. Now all of it seems to be on faith that the Euro leaders will be spurred into action. Talk of a leveraged European Financial Stability Fund really giving the market some hope. So the market moving on hope. We saw the material sector the best performing area up by a massive 5% after really underperforming in the quarter to date. The energy sector up by 4.5%. We saw the banking area up by 4.7%. In fact the banks making gains of up to 5.8%. But if we have a look at outside the banks, the other financial were the ones which saw the biggest uh, gains on the market. We saw Macquarie up by a massive 9.5% today. Some of the stocks that were downtrodden today were those exposed to the Aussie dollar and that's because we saw a bounce back in risk assets and a bounce back in the Aussie dollar. So that meant losses for stocks like Amcor, Brambles as well as CSL. But altogether, green on screen, a huge gain for the Australian share market and the best performance that we've seen since December 2008. Back above that, that psychological 4,000 level, only just, I think about four points above it. Is that significant and do you think we can hold above it? James, today really felt like a bear market rally and we've seen these before. In fact, we've seen some very sharp bear market rallies on our market this year. If we have a look at the 52-week chart of the Australian share market, you can see the last big move was after the market hit a low of 3,765 points for the year. Then we saw a pretty dramatic movement upwards and we hit above 4,300 points in a matter of weeks and then you can see that the market has drifting lower since then. So I guess in terms of bear market rally, we were looking at oversold conditions. Short uh, covering would have come into the picture as well. But altogether, it does look like a technical move up, not only in equities, but also supported by commodity prices. Last week was an absolute horror week for commodities, where we saw silver prices down by a huge 24%. We saw gold prices down by 9%, platinum prices down by 11%. And today, we started to see a bounce in some of those commodities. We saw gold prices up by 1.7%. We also saw silver prices gaining almost three percent today so it does look like a rebound really the question for traders is whether we have seen a longer term bottom or whether this is a bear market rally and at the moment it does look like a bear market rally so I guess a little bit of caution that uh, that uh, longer term traders don't fall into the trap that we're in another bull market because if you have a look at the chart of course since April April we've seen a very steep trend and there's nothing on the charts to indicate that we've reached a long term bottom. What's going to be the key in your mind, Julia? Is it going to be the, the outlook, if you like, for commodity prices? Because as you say, the, the big depression that we have seen in them has played absolute havoc with, uh, with our equity market. Are they going to be the keys going forward, the key going forward? And if that's the case, is that a little bit gloomy? Because as David Land was mentioning, you know, the, the, the big actual issues uh, facing the likes of Europe aren't going to dissipate anytime soon. Unfortunately, the structural problems that we are seeing in a lot of the major economies, including the Eurozone as well as the US, these aren't going to disappear overnight. The huge amounts of debt, the very low, um, the very low gro rates of growth that we're expecting to see as well. In fact, if we have a look at Japan's case, its indebtedness and the problem it has in, had in terms of asset prices are uh, breaking there. We've seen the Japanese market from 1992 down to the trough that we've seen uh, lose around about 80% in value. And yet in that time period, we've seen some pretty big cyclical bull markets as well. In fact, the biggest one from 2003 to 2007 where we've seen the market gaining a massive 125%. So I guess the message here is that in a secular bear market, the buy and hold strategy doesn't necessarily work because of the deterioration in values, usually over a number of decades. But trying to find the turning points that's the way to play these markets and you see absolutely huge rallies during this time also a lot of people saying that the market is uh, looking attractive on valuation terms and in secular 
compared to secular bull market uh, PE ratios, yes, it's very attractive. In fact, since 1982, the average PE ratio for the Australian market has been about 15.8. But that whole time we've been in a secular bull market. We go back to the last secular bear market from 1969 to 1981. Then the average PE ratio then was 8.6. And we actually saw it bottoming out at 5 point six during our uh, nineteen seventy four. So I guess you have to gauge the market conditions. We're certainly not in a bull market at the moment. So to compare some of the metrics that we are seeing against a secular bull market, I think um, it could lead to more losses in investors' portfolios.